Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and it would seem that we have received a response from Shane Isaac, the founder of Earth2, in regards to the recent claims of pending defamation lawsuits being filed against Big Fry TV and myself from Tanner Rosankovic, aka Various Benson. And there are a few important takeaways with this video response that I feel is extremely pertinent to discuss, as while he does confirm no lawsuits, his stance regarding Buddy Boy Benson does appear to be flawed and is deeply misrepresentative of the actual facts regarding his history and of the current situation that resulted from Tanner's rhetoric within that recorded voice conversation. So, much like with the recording of Tanner from yesterday, I will be running through Shane's statements within the video that he posted to YouTube, and I will post the link to his video down in the pinned comment so people can watch it straight through if they desire. So, let's get started with Shane's confirmation that there is no lawsuit. The statements made in the audio recording are not accurate. We are too busy focusing on the game and the platform, but this, I have to say, is a classic example of where something not true is instantly blown up and presented as factual truth even when the publishers themselves have good cause to believe that it's likely not true and claim in their own videos that this is likely not true. Now, prior to that clip, Shane repeated several times that this was illegally recorded audio, failing or refusing to take into account any applicable areas of single-party consent and instead relying on the oft-held position of Tanner Rosankovic himself. And to a certain extent in regards to Shane's claims that there was a potential of this not being true, I will say this. He is correct that there was a degree of admitted possibility that this was untrue, which I stated as such within my video. The reason why there is always a possibility of something like this being untrue is strictly due to the person who said it. Buddy Boy Benson is a known liar. He has lied so many times that when he does speak the truth, it honestly comes as a bit of a surprise. However, in a private conversation away from public eyes with him saying this, we as the potentially affected creators have to act under the presumption of truth while underscoring the possibility that this might be Tanner being Tanner, which is a goddamn liar. And also, we must take a stance to make certain that our viewers remain informed so that if our channels suddenly get whisked away in the night, they will know why. Of course, Shane is, in my opinion, and attempting to phrase this in such a manner to paint our channels as little more than outrage peddlers, defamers, and clickbaiters, and I would expect no less from him given our views on his project. It's extremely suspect platform economics, it's dangerous requirements for a vast amount of personal data, it's exceptionally predatory terms of service just as a start. That's normal for a person such as him in the position he is in to think that way, and I can scarcely fault the man for lacking any form of situational awareness. But let's continue on. I cannot confirm whether the voice in the audio is the junior dev we hired, and I, as I do not know him well. Now, I saw this same thing being discussed by the quote-unquote investors within the Earth2 Discord last night, raising the question, was this actually Buddy Boy Benson? Well, after listening to numerous audio recordings of Tanner over the last couple of years, myself and Big Fry TV know full well the sound of his voice, the manner of his speech, and it was undoubtedly him. But here is a little bit of proof for you all. I'll be showing you some audio clips from the leaked audio that was sent to us yesterday, along with a discussion Tanner had with another developer over a trademark dispute that was from October 16th of 2020. So yeah, I didn't even know you had an issue with the game's title. Um, now, without getting into the nitty-picky nitty stuff, you know, like whose game was named what first, let's not even go there because, well, you know, we're obviously going to think differently, but... So in the TOS, I can, I'll, someone showed me on their screen share, but I'll find it and I'll send you. It says that it is against terms and service to make videos um, against the youth. So that's that's just what they have. Because you could see on, if you, I don't have any screenshots of it, but if you go, if you have one, you'll see it says Nitrato. And that's just what they host. They host Minecraft servers. So that's their default, you know, web hosting index HTML, which you need to swap out. And we swapped it out, but there was a lot of issues with cache. Certainly, the, that started at like a couple of cents. That's just the market values pushing it up. They don't touch any of the economy. It's a self. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a, it's a proper economy. So we don't touch any of the values of the okay, land. So, it so just pushes all, up. It's all like So yes, it most definitely was Tanner in the recording from yesterday. And moving right along to Shane's next statement. What I see here is people publishing attacks and others openly supporting attacks on a young 18-year-old man who was a minor through most of this three-year ordeal, having been targeted since he was 15. Now, I don't know this young man well, 
but from what I have been told is at 15 he made an FPS game, something I would be super proud of my children made, shared it with a YouTuber who eventually published a damaging video about the game and the junior dev resulting in the developer asking for the video to be taken down but from the from the publisher and things spiraled out of control from there. Apparently some models or assets were used in the game without the correct licensing and this became the main point of focus. Even if this were true, you have an ambitious 15 year old kid here. Why not just give him some feedback and let him continue on? All right, first of all, Tanner, aka Buddy Boy Benson, has lied about his age so many times it's not even funny. And this is something that I discussed in my previous video as well. At the time of the civil contract issue, Tanner was, by his own statements, 17, unless he was lying about that. Which, well, it's Tanner. Of course, if he really was 15 years of age, then he would still be a minor. Remember, all that stuff happened two years ago. However, at that time, Tanner was misrepresenting his age, claiming he was 18 when he was not, and violating Steam Terms of Service as they do require a developer publishing a game on their service to be of legal age. In addition, he further violated Steam Terms of Service by posting fake reviews for Civil Contract, which is review manipulation, and in reality, his age doesn't even matter in the slightest. And in terms of Shane's statement of, why not give him some feedback and let him continue on? This is highly misrepresentative of the situation. Initially, the feedback on the game was all that was provided, and the feedback was not complimentary. He requested via email that Big Fry TV publish a video on his game, which was done. The video was not complimentary of the game in the slightest. Tanner hounded Psy Syndicate to produce a video on his game as well, which was similarly uncomplimentary in nature. And as a result of those two channels not liking his game, he filed DMCA strikes against both of them and attempted to abuse the DMCA law as a sort of Damocles to hold over their heads in an effort to remove the negative critique of his game, also engaging in extortion tactics and threats. And that information was reported on. Tanner was no innocent there. He was not the victim. He was the aggressor and was violating the law to silence critique. And yet Shane is over here attempting to paint our channels as these big bad bullies for daring to pick on an innocent young boy. Where in reality, Tanner threatened the existence of those two channels illegally, and as a result, he got his slimy little ass handed to him. It's really just that simple. When you claim you're an adult and you violate the law in an attempt to harm the channels of the people that you asked to review your game, don't expect them to go quietly into the night. Age doesn't even enter into it. Shane continues, Obviously, there are varying levels of maturity at different ages, but I would say that when a young person is targeted online over a number of years from people with tens if not hundreds of thousands of followers, the mental damage and ramifications from such torment is real. It's significant and it can even be life altering. I mean, I don't like waking up to defamatory videos about me. I can't imagine how difficult that would be for a young teenager who cannot defend himself or cannot effectively defend himself over a number of years and who was just, just trying, to, trying to do something with his life. Again, Shane is misrepresenting the reality of the previous situations as I just got finished talking about. Tanner is not some innocent victim here. He was the aggressor who was violating the law, lying his little ass off, threatening the destruction of their channels, attempting to engage in extortion tactics, all in an effort to silence the critique of his game, not of him. He is no innocent. Now, I'm not a public speaker. I don't have the voice to make a posts sound exciting or engaging, but I do like to give talented people who have passion in their line of work a second chance. Again, he was not the victim. Get that through your thick skull, Shane. And let's talk about second chances for a moment. Once upon a time, Civil Contract did release on Steam. It was in a deplorable state and unfit to play. After it got panned on Steam, Tanner pulled the store page down saying he'd be working on the game and then posting it back up. Okay, fine. Then some time later, Tanner approached me under the guise of the Capital Gaming RP Discord user pretending to be someone else in order to pass himself off as a member of the development team that I personally do not believe actually existed and asked me to take a second look at Civil Contract, stating that they had a new update that had fixed a lot of issues and introduced a great many new things. The problem was that patch was, to my knowledge, never implemented and the only thing he had to provide me when he asked for me to take a look at the game was a YouTube video discussing the 
planned changes. Naturally, I declined, stating that I would be willing to do that if and when the update was actually applied to the game, not before, as I would not produce a video making claims about features and updates for a game that did not exist yet. He then also attempted to get me to sit down and reconcile with well, him, as he was still pretending to be someone else at that point, stating that Benson had already reconciled with Psy Syndicate and Big Fry TV. I reached out to Big Fry TV, who confirmed that this was a lie. He never reconciled with Benson. I also spoke with another YouTuber, Durag, who stated that Tanner had reached out to him asking for the same, claiming that he had reconciled with both Big Fry TV and myself, which again was a bald faced lie. And then we have Monogon Echo, Tanner's recently released game where he purchased the IP from someone else and there was a DMCA strike filed against the game because, and bear in mind I've not been able to confirm this so take it with a grain of salt, it was alleged that Tanner had not paid for the acquisition, although I do not know if it was paid at all or it was still missing some portions. Either way, Tanner was still right up to his old tricks again as MMO Fallout figured out that Tanner had been engaging in review manipulation with this game, much the same as he did with Civil Contract, with fake reviews, and I've been informed from two separate Discord moderators for Tanner that he consistently asked his team to go post reviews in order to bump the numbers, which is unethical and against Steam terms of service, and developers have been wiped from Steam for far less. So there's our second chance there, showing that Tanner has not changed, as the Monogon Echo thing is literally a month old. So let's talk about the third chance, which is this current situation. Tanner, as a contracted member of your team, Shane, lied about defamation lawsuits regarding your company. The information surrounding the lawsuit claim was found out and our channels acted accordingly. And the results of that action placed your own company under an even worse light and placed it under even greater scrutiny. This is your employee actively causing harm to your company and its reputation because he is such a pathological liar that he seemingly just can't help but spread falsehoods out of his hate boner for Big Fry TV and myself. This poor innocent child employee of yours actively caused harm to your business through those lies. It baffles me to see such a lack of situational awareness, but I suppose again, that's to be expected. So there were three chances that Tanner has been given over the course of the past two years, and he has shown no remorse for his actions, no evidence that he has changed in the slightest in these past two years, and no evidence that he ever will. Hell, your own community kept on stating that our channels should do our research, and we did. And what we saw was highly unethical, predatory, and exceptionally anti-consumer in nature. In addition, your own terms of service show that there is a potential of your monetization methods being an unregistered security and also might be an unregulated exchange. That is why it was referred to as being a scam, means you still seem to be so completely baffled as to why. Research was done. You've been weighed, you've been measured, and you've been found wanting. I'm glad for your sake that there will not be any lawsuits. Discovery would have had me feeling like a kid in a candy store. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.